Let's have a look at what's known as octal numbers. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing over here is I'm going to be going through the octal numbers, explain to you what they are and what they consist of. And then I'll be doing some examples as to converting from octal numbers to decimal. Then we'll be looking at converting decimal numbers to octal numbers and we'll be also looking at adding octal numbers together. Okay, so octal numbers are essentially a base 8 number system. So binary was a two num base 2 number system, decimal is a base 10 number system, um, so octal numbers uses a base 8 number system. And again, with a base 8, it refers to 8 different numbers that we can have. So our numbers range from 0 all the way up to 7. That will give us a range of 8 different numbers. Okay, so using the same format in terms of a table as we did before, essentially you're going to be looking at having 8 to the power of 0, 8 to the power of 1, 8 to the power of 2, 8 to the power of 3, 8 to the power of 4, and it goes up to 8 to the power of infinity. So the same principles are, um, and we're going to apply over here. Again, we're looking at the um, powers increasing, but the base being the value of 8. Okay, so 8 to the power of 0 is 1. 8 to the power of 1 is 8. And we've got 8 squared, which is equal to 64. 8 to the power of 3 is 512. And 8 to the power of 4 is 4096. Okay, so that will give us a good breakdown and um, reference when you do the different calculations. Okay, so the first thing we're going to be looking at is converting octal numbers to decimal. Okay, so let's say we look at the number 271. That's the octal um, number, and we need to convert it to a decimal number. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to place it into our table over here as 271. Okay, so that is equal to 2 times 8 to the power of um, 2. Okay, so 2 times 8 to the power of 2 plus 7 times 8 to the power of 1. plus 1 times 8 to the power of 0. Okay, and that is equal to 128 plus 56 plus 1 times 8 to the power of 0 is 1, which is equal to 185. Because it's pretty the same principle we're using as we did for converting binary numbers to decimals, we're using now to um, convert octal numbers to decimal. Let's look at another example. So what about um, 2, sorry, uh, let's, let's have a look at the number uh, 7692. It's a base 8 number and I'll tell you to convert that into a decimal number. Okay, so I don't know if you've noticed over here, I threw in an error over here. Um, just to sort of see if you're able to pick up, because this is, again, common mistakes that are often made. You'll see I've got a number 9 over here, and that is above 8. As a matter of fact, it's above 7 even. So this is not a valid um, octal number. Okay, so um, if you do see a... Uh, or if you do get to an answer that's got a value of 8 or 9 in your answer, you will know immediately that you've made an error somewhere and it's not a valid number. Okay, so let's um, look past that error and try and make it a more appropriate um, value. So 7632, base 8. Okay, so convert that. So again, we can put this number into our table over here. So that will be... Uh, 2, 3, uh, 6 and 7. Okay, so that is what we're going to be 
working with over there. Alright, so um, this is equal to, okay, so let's have a look, that's 7 times 8 to the power of 3 plus 6 times 8 to the power of 2 plus 3 times 8 to the power of 1 plus 2 times 8 to the power of 0 okay so we do that calculation we'll find that's equal to 3584 plus 6 times 8 to the power of 2 is equal to 384 plus uh, 3 times 8 is 24 plus 2 okay, and that's equal to 3994 okay. so converting from octal number to decimal number is pretty straightforward it's essentially the same sort of steps you would follow as we've looked at converting from binary to decimal um, numbers now when it comes to decimal to octal numbers we're going to be following exactly the same steps as we would have done from decimal to binary numbers. Um, again, the only difference is going to be the change in our basis. Okay, so let's say for example, we look at the number 3592. Okay, so that's a base 10 number, and you've got to convert that to octal number system. Okay, so again, to make things maybe easier, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rewrite our table values over here so that we can follow it more easily. So it will be um, 8 to the power of 0, 8 to the 1, 8 to the power of 2, 8 to the power of 3, 8 to the power of 4, 8 to the 5, 8 to the power of 6. Okay, and that can also continue up to infinity. Okay, and we've got 1... 8, 64, 512, 4096. I'm not even going to bother calculating the rest of these because this number is less than 4096. So I know it's going to be within that range. Okay. All right, so the first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to say, okay, well, we've got um, the number 3592. Okay. Does 4096 go into 3592? No, it doesn't. So we place a zero over here. Okay, then we circle, well, what about 512? Does 512 go into 3592? Yes, it does. How many times does it go into that? Okay, so you've got to take out your calculator and you've got to just say, well, 3592 divided by 512 and look at what the... Um, number to the left of the decimal number would be and that would give you an indication of seven point something so it goes in seven times exactly okay so now we can subtract from this seven times five and twelve or more specifically more correctly eight to the power of three okay and once we do that calculation we left with the value of eight okay so now that we've done that, let's go to the next column. Does 64 go into 8? Because that's the next value we're looking at. No, it doesn't. So we place a 0 over there. Does 8 go into um, 8? Yes, it does. How many times? goes in once. Okay, so we minus 1 times 8 to the power of, zip of um, 1. And that's equal to 0. So now we get a zero, we know again 95% chance of us getting this um, value correct, or this, this, this answer correct. Okay, does one go into zero? No, it doesn't. So that becomes a zero over there. Okay, so therefore, 3592 base 10 is equal to 7 times 8 to the power of 3 plus 1 times 8 to the power of 1 which is equal to 7010 base 8. 
Okay, let's have a look at uh, another example. So let's say I give you the number 635 base 10 and I ask you to convert this into a, into a decimal number. Okay, so we've got our table set up over here. I'm going to use the same columns I've got over there, the, the values on the columns. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, 635. Okay, let's have a look. Does 4096 go into 635? No, it doesn't. Okay, so I can just put, make a line over there. Okay, so it doesn't. Does 512 go into 635? Yes, it does. How many times does it go in there? It goes in once. Okay, so 635 minus 1 times um, 8 to the power of 3. Okay, is equal to 1, 2, 3. Okay, so now we've got 1, 2, 3 as our next number we're going to be looking at. Does 64 go into 1, 2, 3? Yes, it does. How many times does it go in? It goes in once. Okay. So we subtract 1 multiplied by 8 to the power of 2. Okay, and we do that calculation, we're left with 59. Okay, so now 59 is the next value that we are going to be looking at. Okay, does 8 go into 59? Yes, it does. How many times is it going? 7 times. Okay, so we're going to subtract 7 times. 8 to the power of 1 and we left with a value of 3 okay so now 3 is the next value we're going to be looking at does 1 go into 3 yes it does how many times 3 times so we subtract 3 times 8 to the power of 0 and that's equal to 0 so that means that there's a 95 percent chance we've got that correct okay so now that we've done that we can say that therefore 635 base 10 is equal to 1 times 8 to the power of 3 plus 1 times 8 to the power of 2 plus 7 times 8 to the power of 1 okay plus 3 times 8 to the power of 0 which is equal to 1173 base 8 Okay, so as you can see, we did exactly the same steps as we would have done with binary number systems. Now that we know how to convert from binary to this, uh, from, from, sorry, from octal from, to decimal and to this, from decimal to octal, let's have a look at now doing octal addition. Okay, so with octal addition, We're going to again <clears throat> do the same principles as we did with binary addition. Okay. So let's say, for example, I give you a question and I say to you, okay, what is um, all these numbers are in octal? And I say to you, 7010 plus um, 1173. So those are octal numbers and calculate them. Okay, so how are we going to go about doing it? Okay, so again, keep in mind that 8 is the number, our borderline, like it would be 2 for binary numbers, 8 would be our borderline. So we're going to, if anything is, is equal to 8 or higher, we're going to have to see how many times 8 goes into that number and write down the remainder at the bottom. Okay, so 0 plus 3 is equal to 3. So that's pretty easy. Okay, 1 plus 7, that's equal to 8. Now, remember, we can't have an 8. Anything that's 8 or higher, we need to carry over 1 and write down the remainder. So 8, how many times does 8 go into 8? It goes in 1. So we carry over 1. And the remainder for, for, for that would be 0. Okay, 1 <coughs> plus 0 plus 1 is equal to 2. Okay, so that's under 8, so we don't need to worry about that. So we just write 2. Okay, um, 7 plus 1 is equal to 8. Okay, now again, 
we can't write an 8, so how many times is 8 going to 8? It goes in 1s, so we carry over 1 over there. Okay, and the remainder is a 0. 1 plus 0 plus 0 is equal to 1. Okay, and so therefore our answer is 10203. Let's have a look at another example. Make it a little bit more challenging example. So we're going to be looking at three octal numbers. So for example, 6351 plus 10224 uh, plus 5167. Add those three numbers together. How would we go about doing it? Okay, so let's again look at it one column at a time. The 1 plus 4 plus 7 is equal to 12. Okay, so I'm going to just actually go and write over here in a read the number 12. I'm not doing it in red over there just and, and very small just to sort of keep that in mind because I mean we can't write the number 12. It's larger than 8. Okay, so if we had to look at that, how many times is 8 going to 12? Well, it goes in ones. Okay, so therefore we can carry over one over there. And if we had to subtract eight from twelve, um, what would be the remainder? That would be equal to four. Okay, so that becomes then a four. Okay, so now we've got to go to the next column. One plus five plus two plus six. Okay, so that's equal to eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So again, I'm going to go and I'm just going to write over here the number 14. Okay, so we can't write the number 14, so how many times is 8 going to 14 over there? Well, 8 goes into 14 once, okay? So we can carry over 1 over there, okay? And what would be the remainder if we had to subtract 8 from 14? What will be the number 6? Okay, so that becomes then a 6. Okay, let's go to the next column. So 1 plus 3 plus 0 plus 1. Okay, so that's equal to 5. Is 5 less than um, less than 8? Yes, it is. So we don't need to worry about it. We can just write the number 5 over there. Okay, then we've got 6 plus 1 plus 5. That's equal to 12. Okay, so we can write 12 over here. Make a note of it. Okay, so how many times does... 8 going to 12? Well, it goes in 1's. Okay, so therefore we carry over 1 over there. And um, what would be the remainder of that? Well, it will be 4. So we bring that down and that would be a 4 over there. Okay, then 1 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0. Remember we can have still zeros in front of all of numbers and won't change any of the values. Okay, so bring that 1 down and that becomes our answer base 8. Okay, so as you can see the same principles are applied as you would do with addition in decimal numbers as you would do with addition in binary numbers we will be using the same principles. Now very important okay, if you are asked to add these two num octal numbers together then we are trying to test to see if you're able to add it up in this fashion. Now what I've seen often happen, people will go and convert each number into a decimal number, add them together, get a final answer and then that final answer convert that back to octal. If you had to do that, except that it's extra steps that you're going to be following and more time that you're going to be wasting, you'll get zero for that um, answer because what we are looking for is we want to see can you add in octal um, number fashion. Okay, so um, I've also seen it before that with maybe this gets converted to a binary number and then gets added together and then from there back to octal. Something we'll be looking at again um, um, later on. So if you are asked to add an octal number system, add an octal number system. Don't use another number system to do your additions.